it's early morning and we knock on the gate of Andrew Mwenda here at the upscale Royal Palm Estates in Luzira, a Kampala suburb. Yeah, do you want to come in? The veteran journalist is up by 4 a.m. early morning and does some reading. By 6 a.m. he is off to work. Mwenda loves speed and when he gave us a ride on his Audi Q7, we needed faith to keep going. By 7 a.m. on weekdays, his first stop is at Capital FM, where he does a 15-minute analysis on current affairs. That they try to intervene and take away those markets because the president of it is not very good at it. He doesn't tolerate inefficiency very well, and especially as far as time is concerned. Afterwards, he heads to the independent news magazine offices, not far from Capital FM. He founded the news magazine in 2007 after leaving Daily Monitor, where he was the political editor. He resigned under controversial circumstances over his writings. The journalist, who has had many brushes with the state that saw him serve stints in jail, thereafter opened a glossy independent news magazine that is now a bi-monthly. The independent newspaper was created as a platform to advance the cause of democracy, freedom and liberty in Uganda. Mwenda was inspired by the founders of the Monitor newspaper, where he cut his journalism teeth in 1995, three years after the newspaper was launched. He was among the first crop of journalism students of Macri University. Charles Onyangobu and Wafalo Gutu and David Oumandi, they were so close to me. Charles, in the time, in terms of intellectual development, Charles had a great imprint. Charles likes sophisticated ideas. So I had to learn that from him. Wafala, in terms of just his, the sheer uh, personal integrity he has. Indeed, the pictures of these people are framed in his office here at the Independent. Reading has been the passion of this old boy of Nyakasura School, Mbara High School and Busoga College, Mwere, since childhood. Something he says his father instilled in the children. You know, when I was a child, I would go to our library, my dad and the, my brothers and my uncles would be seated arguing. Uh, Mamo Dani, this, they would argue about Obote or Amin or whatever it was, and they would quote Mamo Dani, Professor Kabwejere, they would quote uh, Dan Nabudere, and things like that. Yes. Indeed, one of the rooms in his house hosts the library, and the books here have been accumulated over time. Mm -hmm. these, are, these are books on America, these are autobiographies. These are books that have accumulated over the last 17 years. So it is not that they woke up one day and say, I should have a label like this. <laughs> this book collection is so big that Andrew Mwenda Times uses a ladder to access some books. Yeah. Books I keep up here are books that I do not need for easy reference. The way yes. this liberal is arranged. There are even more books and magazines in the toilet. And he says it is fulfilling reading here. You know when I'm reading something, I like to highlight them, so I keep a, well, a yellow highlighter. In the bedroom. The flamboyant journalist listens to audio books from his iPhone that also has a selection of music. The homeland. To mainland Greece. He confesses that he despises many in the current crop of Ugandan journalists, mainly for laziness and lack of insight. If there is a disaster that happened in this country, is the Ugandan journalist of today, the depth of their shallowness, ignorance. And you see, I blame it's not a system of education. That is a personal, I believe in personal responsibility. This is his advice. You know me, I go to the city's house, I sit there and eat food. I go to state house, I sit and eat there. I go to Olaro Tunu's house, oh, he takes me out to lunch. Let us first focus on the substance of the argument rather than the subjective motivations why somebody's making it. He can stick area. to what he believes in, even when everyone else has taken a contrary position. I believe even Kony, if Kony were arrested today and put on the streets of Kampala, people may say, oh, good. Lynch him, lynch him. I refuse things like that. In his fairly long journalism career, Mwenda has met presidents, CEOs, and even big name writers he longed to meet as a student. He appears to have arrived, but the man who will soon make 40 years feels otherwise. I have not even achieved 1% of the things I would want to achieve in life. Not even 1%. I have been meaning to produce ideas, largely containing a, a book or a series of books, that can influence humanity for the next 1,000 years. At first, Mwenda declines to speak of his personal life, but later opens up. You can see my wife's picture there. Yeah. Mm. 
And if she was here today, she's going to be here on Tuesday. She will not allow you to do this filming. So you are very lucky that she's not around because she does not like her privacy being taken away by television and things like that. So me and her are exact opposites. The man who has a degree in development studies from the University of London has won many awards, including the 2008 International Press Freedom Accolade, given to journalists who show courage in defending press freedom in the face of attacks, threats or imprisonment. Mwanda has not only borne the cost of practicing journalism by serving time in jail, but also won a number of cases in court that has extended the frontiers of media freedom. He is a fervent critic of President Charles Seven, but also friends with him. In fact, at one time, he rode in the presidential limousine. He is also friends with President Kagame of Rwanda. Maurice Chol, NTV.